Hello, Tesla coil fans. Uh, of course, there's no real rules in building a Tesla coil. There's things that you read, things that you see, and you wonder whether they're true or not. So this is my experience building a single bipolar Tesla coil based on a neon sign transformer. Uh, why build a Tesla coil at all? Well, it's one of the, maybe the only thing that you can build yourself that's fairly easy to build that you can't just buy online. Uh, I like also, you know, I'd like to show the thing off. I'd like it to look cool. I, I, they have kind of a retro steampunky kind of look, particularly the bipolar design I chose. Uh, one of my design goals was to have all the parts visible and doing something functional. Uh, I didn't quite hit that completely, the capacitors and the, and the fan actually are hidden inside the box. And the uh, insulators are really not doing anything, they're just for decoration. But uh, another, another goal I had was that I could disassemble it and reassemble it easily and also that it make big fire. Okay, so f as far as rules, here's the rules that I tested. That you need to do math, you know, to compute the resonant frequency and tune it. In my case, that was false. I picked the secondary because it looked pretty. Everything else was just trial and error building around that thing. And yes, it did take time. I had some dumb luck. Um, one weird thing is when I bought that secondary, that big long coil, just sitting by itself, it would shock me. Does anybody know why, how that could happen? If you do, put it in the comments below. Rule number two is that you need lots of space between the primary and the secondary. You want loose coupling. I found that to be true. When I had the had them too close when I had that uh, secondary too close. I had arcs going from the primary to the secondary, burning holes in my somewhat costly secondary coil. I also had racing sparks up and down the secondary coil. And to correct that problem was a lot of work. I mean, building you know, new wooden forms, uh, winding copper tubing around those forms, it takes time. Uh, rule number three, you need high voltage resistors to bleed your capacitors for safety. I'm not sure they're even needed because capacitors leak by themselves, but I did it. And I used just um, cheap uh, garden variety 10 mega ohm quarter watt resistors across each capacitor. Uh, rule number five, your capacitor bank voltage should be at least twice your neon sign transformer voltage. I found that false. I put eight of these things in series. That adds up to 20,000 volts. They're 2,500 each. And my transformer is 12K. So that's basically 24K versus 20K. So uh, yeah, I'm below that standard. Uh, and even with only seven caps, nothing blue. When I went to six caps, however, the capacitor shorted and the resistors started to burn up. So yeah, there's some truth to it. I did use the recommended polystyrene foil types because, well, they're cheap. Uh, now, rule number six, when you look through basic coil designs, it appears that you're gonna have to choose between one of two basic designs. This is kind of false because if you realize that coiled refrigerator tube is basically no resistance at all, basically a, a short circuit for 50 or 60 cycle current. The two circuits are electrically identical. Rule number seven, you should blow air through the spark gap. I found this one to be true. If uh, the performance of the coil was visibly better when I was blowing the air, and also these electrodes with these cabinet knobs, they got really hot without that air. I've also heard that the capacitors get hot. I didn't touch one to find out. I used a simple computer fan, 12 volt computer fan, driven at 19 volts. If 
from a uh, laptop power supply. Uh, I wish I had used a cyclone fan. It probably would have been better. Uh, rule number eight, wood is not a very good insulator. Well, it was a very humid summer here, and it, basically everything in my Tesla coil is in contact with wood. I had only one problem. When these cabinet knobs were very close to each other, the spark did cause the wood to start on fire. But other than that, I haven't had a problem. Rule number nine, shield the spark gap. It generates dangerous ultraviolet and x-rays. Probably true. But I kind of like the pretty blue color. I did make some effort to block it with this thing. A little bit of insulation in there. Um, rule number 10. You need to protect your transformer by having a safety gap. That's in addition to your spark gap. Uh, I'd say that's patently false. I mean, I, I made tons of mistakes. I shorted the transformer. It was completely open. There were arcs. There were failing capacitors. My neon sign transformer is still fine. Which kind of relates to rule 11, that your neon sign transformer must be the old type before they added safety features. I think I found one on Amazon that will work. It's a new one, it's $200 delivered, and there's a link to it below. Uh, rule 12, Tesla coil can electrocute you. That one I don't know, I didn't try that. Rule 13, you should ground your coil. That's probably not needed. I mean, that would be pretty hard. You have to run a wire out your window into a rod in the ground. It would be particularly difficult with a bipolar design because you would probably ground the center of it. Rule number 14, a Tesla coil will burn down your house. Well, they are very loud. So I think that's unlikely. I, you're, I can't imagine you're gonna be in the grocery store thinking, oh shoot. I forgot to turn off the Tesla coil. I do unplug my laptop while it's running. Rule 15, a Tesla coil produces dangerous ozone. And yeah, you can smell the ozone. But on the other hand, there's people who buy ozone generators to make their environment healthier. I think it really depends on your zodiac sign. So in summary, a Tesla coil, it's amazing. In this physical simplicity, you're basically bouncing electricity between its electrostatic state in the capacitor and its magnetic state in the coil. It has kind of a springiness to it. And the result is dramatic. I mean, you're basically almost directly observing one of the four fundamental forces of nature. So good luck to y'all. Hope you build a great Tesla coil.